Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is a journalist and an author who anchors the lead and co-anchors State of the Union on CNN. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jake Tapper. I have a couple of college friends up there, and I want them to know, you couldn't see, but they were giving me a standing ovation. Those are your college friends? That, well, I have more than that, but that's two of them, yeah. Two of them? Why? The guy on the right looks like he could be your son. <laughs> well, when he gets the mask off, it's different. I understand. All right, there, you're Mr. Politics, yeah. I think they call you on your Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, there's so much to talk about. Let's, yeah. let, let's talk to something that is, it's, it's looming, but may or may not be something. Following the tragic uh, attacks, not only in Uvalde but all across the country, sure. so many mass shootings in the last ten days. One of them in Philadelphia, like literally half a mile from where I grew up, the South Street one. It's awful. Uh, Chris Murphy and Cornyn have been assigned by uh, Schumer and McConnell to come together in the Senate and come up with something. And the word is they've got something. Yeah. We don't know what it is, other than the fact that it doesn't have background checks and it doesn't address, it doesn't reduce the number of. Automatic weapons, or, or it, it, semi-automatic. It weapons. won't. Yeah, they, I mean, what I what I don't know what's going to be in the final package. I do know that Republicans are eager for it to be something that can get not just ten Republicans, but maybe twenty-five or thirty Republicans. They want it to be a a, a big vote, a big bipartisan vote. So it has will... anything been floated that you've heard Republicans willing to get behind? Encouraging states to pass uh, red flag laws, which would enable okay. uh, community members or the police to petition to prevent somebody from being able to mm. purchase guns. Mm. This is something that actually has been shown to be very effective in Florida. Uh, they passed a red flag law after the horrible Parkland shooting. When Rick Scott was still the... Rick Scott was the governor, governor yeah. and one of our correspondents, Leila Santiago, just did a great piece, interviewed the Pasco County Sheriff there, and he talked about how great this law is. It keeps guns out of the hands of people who are, not only would pose harm to other people, but to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and she was in the courtroom, and there was a, somebody who had... Uh, expressed suicidal ideation, and he was uh, at, he was mourning his son who had died, and they talked. They took his gun. We saw the whole thing, and mm -hmm. it was to protect him. Uh, and what it about seems to raising work. what about raising uh, the, the, age. the age for purchasing uh, semi-automatic weapons? Have you heard anything about that? I have not. I mean, it is uh, it is an idea. Obviously, the the gunman in Uvalde, the gunman in Parkland, the gunman in Buffalo, all were eighteen. Um, I don't. You know, I think I, uh, there is a disproportionate amount of violence committed with semi-automatic weapons by men uh, 18 to 21 mm -hmm. um, in that three-year age group. So that's something that's been floated. I don't know if that's going to be introduced. I don't know if it's going to pass. Um, it, it was When Chris Murphy, when I interviewed him yesterday, he, I don't think he mentioned that uh, when he talked about things that, that could theoretically be in the final product. You were... Um... You were reporting when Columbine happened in 1999. So. I went to Denver right after Columbine for the NRA convention uh, in Denver, just uh, days after. And uh, it was it was so. You talk about grief a lot uh, in your life, not necessarily here, but but it's one of the things that you and President Biden talk about uh, very movingly. This was dry, this was flying into a city, and you could feel the grief. I mm -hmm. felt it. Uh, when I went to Parkland one week after the shooting, we did that town hall, and I walked into that arena, and you could feel just the despair, the utter despair. It, it's very difficult to convey to people. Well, how, as someone who's covered this for so many years now, we forget that Columbine, besides being a extraordinary horror, was not a common event at the time, and it's become all too common in the last yeah. 23 years. How has the discussion of a gun, what's called sensible uh, Right, common gun, sense gun reform. Uh, yeah. that's, that's the phrase, common sense gun reform. How has that conversation changed in the last 23 years? Well, first of all, I mean, what's very clear is that there is less willingness of Republican legislators to vote for it, and I think that is because there is much less willingness on the, behalf, on, on the part of Republican voters to support it. Um, and How do you think that came about? Because in, in the 1990s, the assault weapons ban yeah. 
That was a bipartisan bill, wasn't it? Uh, nine Republicans, including Republicans from states like Indiana, uh, voted for that ban. Um, there were nine, uh, it was like, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was something that Republicans would be willing to vote for. I, I can't really explain it, um, but it is very clear that there is one political party that just is very reluctant, and I'm not even talking about the leaders as much as I am of the voters, to, to pass new laws on these things, except we did see in Florida, after Parkland, the Republican governor and Republican-dominated legislatures pass a very sweeping series of reforms that included raising the age from 18 to 21, a waiting period, red flag laws, making schools safer, more mm -hmm. school security, and a whole bunch of things um, that really had an effect. And it might have been because the Parkland kids were so active and outspoken. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what makes it different from today or Congress uh, except maybe you can't get in the face of a, a congressman as easily as you can get in the face of a state representative, maybe. What, I know you, in, in the best of all possible worlds, uh, Congress is responsive to their voters. You're saying, like, it's the voters who won't allow them to do yeah. this. But 90% of Americans, and a vast majority of Republicans, want universal background checks. Right. But it doesn't happen, so that kind of flies in the face of, well, it's the voters. Yes, except when you poll... Uh, you're polling the public. The public is not the same as the voters. In the primary. The voters are the people who turn out and vote. I see. The public uh -huh. are just all the people who exist. And so it is different. And then often there will be uh, a, an issue that polls very well in a state, and then they have a referendum on that issue. And this just happened in Nevada and in Maine and it becomes like a razor-thin uh, margin of victory or defeat, uh, even though the issue polls at 70% or something. Okay, let's go on to, let's go on to the, the next... <clears throat> can, I, can I just say one more thing about guns? Because this is something that I've been thinking about a lot, and that is how do we cover it in the media? Are we covering it the right way? Mm -hmm. I don't know that we are, and the reason I say that is because, Stephen, you and I, um, when I wrote my book about Afghanistan, um, we, we, and you were on the other show on a different network, yeah. Uh, we, we talked about, you know, all the decisions I made when writing this book, and one of the decisions I made was how graphic should I be when describing what happens to these service members in, in the book, in the pages, without pictures, but, yes. like, how graphic should I be? And it was something I thought about a lot, and I think about it a lot when it comes to this, when it comes to gun violence, because it is so sanitized, the versions of the stories that we show people. As horrified as we are, we're not actually seeing it. We're not seeing anything. Think about how shocking it is in a local crime report when you see like a little bit of blood on the sidewalk. Yes. It's stunning. You never see that. Well, who are we protecting? I, I, I'm not calling for media to show anything that people, um, that family members don't want out there or whatever, but you know, I asked my team like after the Uvalde shooting, and again, I, I understand why people are horrified. It's awful. But, I mean, are there images of, of ambulances? Are there images of body bags? Like, what, what is available? Because we're not doing the public a service by just describing what happened, and then all you see is a bunch of cops standing outside a building. And it's just ultimately so horrific. And I've said this a million times on, on my show. The adults of the United States are failing the children of the United States. We have to take a quick break. Right. But when we come back, I will ask Jake about what to expect from the January 6th hearings starting this Thursday. Stick around. Yeah.